Hello everyone, in this video, I'm gonna show you how to set up a CloudWatch alarm. So our first step is to head over to the CloudWatch section of the AWS dashboard. So I'm just gonna to go to the top search bar here and just type in CloudWatch. Uh, we are gonna click on that. And once all this loads, uh, there's generally two ways to create alarms in AWS. What you can do is you can head over to the alarm section and then go to like create new alarm over here. And alternatively, you can go to the metric section and go to the explorer and find the metric that you want to set up your alarm for. And then there's a little bell icon where you can uh, just click a little icon and it will create that alarm for you for that particular metric. But let me kind of show you how to do this from the alarms perspective. So we're going to go to the all alarm section here and you can see for this particular account, I don't have any alarms or else they'd be listed here as line items. So I'm going to go to the top right where it says create an alarm, this big orange button here. And first question is, uh, it's going to ask us a preview of the metric expression and the alarm threshold. So we need to set select our metric first. So let's click on this. So this is the same view that you would see if you did this through uh, the metric section. Um, if the, the, this is the other way of creating the alarm. So I want to create a uh, alarm based on my Lambda functions errors, which is a very common thing to do. Uh, unfortunately, this screen isn't really easy to see. Okay, there, that's better. Let's scroll down here. I have a function called TikTok, and this is just basically a function that is running a uh, Lambda function every minute. And for 50% of the invocations, it's going to throw an exception or approximately 50%, I should say. Okay, so let's uh, select that metric in the bottom right here. Actually, maybe before I do that, let's go into view and you can change some of the statistics and the periods here. So this stuff does actually matter. Uh, the statistic, generally you don't wanna use average here. Like you can see I've had some invocations over the past little while, right? You can see, um, you know, for the past, what hour or so this thing has been running. If we use average, like what does this number mean? Like what is the average number of errors per time period? I don't even know how to interpret this number. It doesn't really make sense. So really what we want in this case is sum, which is the sum of the errors per time period. So you can see, uh, you know, we're getting seven errors to, uh, and this is five minute time periods, by the way. Um, so we're getting a whole bunch of different errors here. So this is much better. And we are currently looking at five minute periods here. I wanna change this to one minute periods now. You can see the data is much, much more granular now. And I don't think you can actually go below this. Like you can set the um, option, but I don't think the data is actually gonna show. Oh, it does, okay, cool. For some of them, it only selects um, the data at one minute as the minimum, but I guess they're constantly upgrading here. Okay, so this threshold looks good for me or this kind of period and statistics looks good for me. Uh, so I'm gonna finalize this by going to select metric on the bottom right here. And it's gonna kind of give you a preview of what we are going to be doing. Uh, so we're gonna be basing this off of our metric name, which is errors. Function name is TikTok, statistic is sum. We're looking at one minute periods. Now, if we scroll down a little bit more here, we have a bunch of different conditions that we need to specify. So we can either use static, which is using a value as a threshold, or we can use something called anomaly detection, which is to use a confidence interval or a band as a threshold. Uh, I'm not gonna go into anomaly detection. I actually have a video on how to set this up uh, that you can go watch on my channel. I'll put it in the uh, kind of description section below. Um, but we're gonna be using static. And now, what value do we wanna actually use here? Now, before we can set that, we first need to say whenever the alarm is greater than a threshold, greater than or equal to a threshold, lower than or equal to a threshold, or lower than a threshold. For this case, since we're looking at errors, it makes more sense to have like greater than or equal to a number. So for example, if my error count uh, is greater than five for a certain period of time uh, per one minute or so, then maybe that's a problem, right? So greater than or equal to five makes sense for errors. Uh, for lower where it make, may make sense, um, is if you are ever below a certain period for something like CPU utilization, and this is in terms of auto scaling, you may wanna say if I'm lower than 30% CPU utilization, then spin some machines down or something like that. That's just an example of where this can be applicable. And then we are gonna set this to five. So with this configuration, if we just review it now, we're saying that our sum per one minute period Whenever the errors are greater than or equal to five, then we're gonna be in alarm state, okay? And so that's what our alarm is saying here. 
Now there is a whole bunch of additional configuration that I have down here. And by default, I generally don't suggest to use these default settings here. And honestly, this is where people get the most confused about CloudWatch alarms. So you can see here there's data points and evaluation period, and then there's missing data treatment as well. Uh, so what I wanna do really quick is just go over to my Blackboard and explain this to you. So let me head over there, then I'll explain what's happening with these settings. All right, guys, in this section, I wanna quickly talk to you about the additional configuration section here and how the data points to alarm affects when and if your alarms fire. This is hands down where people get most confused when they're setting up their alarm initially. Uh, so what I wanna do here is just walk you through a little bit of a hypothetical example and explain to you what these numbers mean. So the left-hand column here, this means the number of data points. And on the right-hand side here, we have the evaluation periods or the time periods, right? So in the beginning, we set our time period to be one minute. Now that means every one minute is when our alarm is going to be evaluated. And using one here as the setting for um, the number of data points, it means that for every period, if we are above that threshold, in this case it's five, so greater than or equal to five, we're gonna enter alarm state. And if we're below that threshold, then we are gonna enter okay state. So for every single period, when our alarm is evaluated with this particular configuration, we're basically gonna be flipping back and forth uh, between okay and alarm very, very regularly. This isn't really ideal and it can add a lot of noise to your alarm and a lot of false positives. So instead, what we wanna do is add a little bit of tolerance to our alarm so that you know when there's uh, a couple of periods where there's high numbers of errors all in a row, for example, or all within a particular time period, then we fire our alarm. And this is gonna add a certain degree of stability to our alarm. So what I wanna do here is just walk you through a hypothetical scenario. And I kind of drew it out here over on the right-hand side here in this little graph. Uh, so for example, in this chart, we have units on the left-hand side here. This is, I suppose, could be errors for our case. And then we have time period on the x-axis. And for this case, we're not really specifying the time period, if it's one minutes, five minutes, you know, uh, 15 minutes, whatever. It doesn't really matter when you're setting up your alarm. Um, it could be any of these time periods and the behavior is all gonna be the same. It's just gonna be on a different temporal resolution, so to speak. So uh, let's take a look at this example here. And I wanna run it through like a pressure test of a different configuration that's one that's a little bit more common. So instead of using one for our data points, we're gonna use three. And instead of using one over here, we are gonna use five. So before we even kind of look at the example and try to work out uh, how this is going to behave, let's think about this for a second. So we have five evaluation periods or five time periods here. So what does that mean? Well, it means essentially that whenever we're looking at our data, we're always looking at a five minute in our case or a five time period uh, trailing window. So for example, if we look at the just the x-axis here in our example, if we are on number five, that means that when we are evaluating the data at this particular moment in time, we need to look back for five data points worth of data. So that would be five through one in this case. So that means right now, as of five, we are looking at all of this data when we are trying to evaluate this alarm, okay? And then when we're on six, so now six is current time, right? So that means our, our window is here up until two. And now we are looking at kind of a horseshoe uh, looking pattern here of data, right? And so you can imagine what happens next time. It keeps on moving here. So now if we're starting at seven, we go back to three, and then we are looking at kind of, yeah, there we go, this shape worth of data. So let's actually like kind of evaluate our alarm state, assuming now that we are on seven, right? So what is our alarm state or what? how does our alarm work? Well, it's saying that this is our time period that we need to look at. This is our five minute or five time period trailing window. And we need to have three, you know, three data points above the threshold, above the threshold in order for this alarm to trigger. Well, we have three, right? We have this one, we have this one, and we have this one, right? So we have three over five. That means our alarm is currently in alarm state, right? So let's do this example once more. Let's back it up and I wanna go to eight now, right? And you can imagine what happens in this case. So we, again, we're looking at a five minute trailing window here. And so we're looking at this data in this example. And here we only have three below and two above threshold. So we are two out of five, right? That are above the threshold in our alarm here, greater than or equal to. So that means our alarm is currently in okay state. So you can see here by adding kind of a, a larger denominator, we're giving our alarm more opportunities uh, worth of data points 
uh, to evaluate before it fires. This can help smooth out your alarm so that it's not firing like ping ponging into alarm state back and forth. Now, the most common setup that I typically suggest just before we get into the missing data is to use five minute time periods, so five minutes, and then use two out of three, so two of three. And what this is gonna say is that we basically have 15 minutes worth of time window that we are always looking at, but we're grouping the data by five minute batches or five minute intervals. And two of the data points need to be above that threshold. So for two five minute periods in a row, we need to be above the threshold. I find that this alarm works pretty well as kind of a balance between uh, kind of not getting too many false positives and getting notified whenever something goes wrong. Uh, so let me kind of erase this now, and I want to quickly talk about uh, the missing data functionality and how this kind of behaves. So let me actually, if I can just back this up, this will probably be easier. Back up, back it up. There we go. Perfect. Okay. So missing data is often a problem, right? Uh, sometimes in a lot of applications, in a Lambda function one, uh, you're all either going to have errors or not. Uh, so missing data isn't usually a problem. But in other functions or other applications, you may not be reporting data. Like you may have periods where there's just no invocations on your, your function or your API or, or whatever. You know what I mean? So that means that data is going to be missing. So what does that actually mean? So let me like erase this. Let's assume now we have a instance where data is missing. Where's my brush? Give me my brush. There we go. So data is missing for interval number six here. So what, what this means is that when data is missing, if you just use it as this default option here, this means that your alarm could still fire because it's still looking at number of data points within a time window. So for example, if we are on, let me get my green color here. If, if we had this behavior, right? So, uh, and this is our time window right here, right? and we had a missing data point right here, it doesn't matter that we had a missing data point, right? Because we still have three above five. So we are still, you guessed it, in alarm state, right? Backing that up for a second here. So that means that depending on what your uh, kind of size is here, your denominator or your out of, missing data can have basically no impact. So that's how it's treated as default. Now the second option here, treat missing, da missing data as good, which is not breaching, then you can kind of imagine what this means. It means that if you have a period where there's missing data, really it's gonna interpret it as below the threshold, below the threshold, right? So you can kind of infer what this alarm will do in this case. Actually, in this same example, starting at seven, it would still maintain its alarm state because it's still three out of five. And then in the second or the third one here, so treat missing data as ignore, which is maintain the alarm state. Basically, it's not even going to consider this and it's just going to maintain whatever the alarm state currently is during that, that period. And then finally, uh, treat missing data as bad, which is breaching threshold. That means that if you had missing data here, and let me just kind of erase this to indicate. It means that if you had your missing data here, that it would mean that it's assuming that we are above threshold here, you know, just at some arbitrary land. And so um, if this was enough data points within the period to trigger the alarm, then we would of course be in alarm state. So generally this, uh, what you use here really kind of depends on your application. Um, if it's an error count, you know, missing error counts are good, right? If you, if you don't have a report for errors, then it's good, the same way that zero errors are good. So sometimes if you're not explicitly reporting that you're getting zero for an error, you know, you may want to treat missing data as good. That's kind of an example of when you should use this. So let me go back to the console now and finish explaining the rest of the stuff. All right, so here we are back in the console. So I went ahead and just pre-filled this. Uh, so we are using that three out of five uh, scenario here. So for every five minute windows, if we have three data points that are above the threshold, then we are gonna enter our alarm state. And if we have missing data, I'm gonna treat that as good. I'm gonna basically treat that as a zero. So let's go ahead and click on next in the bottom right here. And for whatever reason, it brought us to the bottom, which isn't good. So this is where you can set the kind of um, configuration for what's going to happen when the alarm enters a variety of states. So you can set what it's going to do uh, for either in alarm, OK, or insufficient data. So for either of these, I believe you can only do one of them at a time, uh, you can set up an alarm here. Now, by by far, it's the most common to use in alarm state, but maybe you want like you want to be notified of when you go into alarm and when you get out of alarm. Uh, that's maybe a case for making two separate alarms, putting one for both of these certain cases. But generally, people only use in alarm. 
Um, and now it's asking us to select an SNS topic for our kind of outbound hook or who do we want to notify uh, when we enter alarm state. And this is where we're going to set up a email notification. So what you can do if you don't have a topic that exists already, you can go to create a new topic and it's just going to auto suggest a name here. So I'm just going to put in my email. So Daniel at be a better dev, better dev .com. I'm going to click on create topic here. That just takes a second. I believe you can add some. Uh, oh, okay. So if you want to add more here. Oh, okay. So I was wrong. Uh, you can add like multiple at once. So you can put an okay and then do the same thing as well. But I'm not going to do that for this case. And then um, there's some other integrations that you can use. So if you want to use auto scaling actions based on this alarm breaching, there's some neat uh, ways to automatically integrate. There's other ways to do this, but this is just a neat little convenience thing. And then just scrolling all the way down, we don't need to care about any of this stuff either. We're just going to go ahead and click on next in the bottom right. Uh, we can set this so five minutes, uh, three of five, and then tick tock function. I don't know. I'm just coming up with random names here. And that's good. So let's go ahead and click on next. So it's giving us a little bit of preview here. So you can see here, it's very unlikely that we're ever going to breach this. So I would say this is a pretty good configuration based our, on our current traffic patterns. But it's always good to take a look at your alarms once in a while and just make sure that the tolerances are correct. Um, the thresholds aren't too far away from what is considered a dangerous level um, or they're not too close to the, the line too often or else it may be a little bit too aggressive of an alarm. So from there, you just can scroll all the way down to the bottom. It's going to give you some confirmation uh, pages for each of this stuff. You can go ahead and go to the bottom right here and click on create an alarm. And now you'll see it's currently in insufficient data. If you give it a couple minutes here, um, the state will enter OK because we have all of our data that's been pumping for the past few minutes or so. so after a few minutes, you can see the state changed to OK. Uh, and one thing that you do need to do is just go to your email and click on the subscription confirmation button or else you're not going to be getting notifications whenever this enters alarm state. But from here, that's all there really is to do. Uh, whenever this thing enters into alarm state now, you should be getting an email. You can test this out by setting the value to really low, uh, like to one, for example, in this case, and just making sure that it sends you an email. Uh, but yeah, that's all you really need to know. Hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know what you think down below and don't forget to like and subscribe.